Now they're taken to the stage at the London Palladium right about now yep. is a band who have been around for nearly six decades, but they're about to play their last ever gig in the UK. But if their name is anything to go by, well, they could rise again at any given time. Believe it or not, I'm in search of a couple of genuine, real-life zombies. I think they're hiding in this choir. But can you spot them? Can our zombies please step forward? Meet Rod Argent and Colin Blunstone. They may not be members of the undead, but they are founding members of classic rock group The Zombies. With hits like Time of the Season and Tell Her No, they are one of the most influential bands of the 60s. But the song that made their name was their 1964 smash debut, She's Not There. Please don't bother trying to find her. She's not there. The song got to number 12 in the UK, but shot straight to number one in America, making the band stars overnight. 53 years later, I'm bringing the boys back to their hometown of St Albans and a pub that has a particular significance for them. So what's so special about this pub? Around Easter, 1961, the zombies met outside this pub. I remember turning up and seeing Colin standing on the corner, think, and I said to Jim, my, my cousin, my God, I hope it's not him, because he had two black eyes from playing rugby and a broken nose, you know, but and unfortunately it was. <laughs> I think they were quite uh, intimidated by me to start with, which was great, <laughs> but unfortunately it didn't last very long. It was an unlikely pairing. Rod was a choir boy at St Albans Cathedral and Colin was a rugby player, but it was Colin's sporting connections that landed them one of their first gigs at his local club. Well, everyone's got to start somewhere, I suppose. Here we are. <laughs> what does it feel like to be back? Well, I, I think it feels quite emotional, really. You must have been very scared, the very first gig. Absolutely. I think we're petrified because I played rugby here. So if, it, if the band had gone wrong, they would have been merciless. <laughs> I don't think I would have left here alive. But we only played to about 20 people. No one realised how it would catch on. I mean, it, it really was... It uh, caught fire, didn't it? It was, it was sensational. Yeah. It wasn't long before the band landed a record deal. She's Not There was the first song they laid down in the studio. But the session didn't exactly go smoothly. The way she lies. We arrived in the Decker Studios in West Hampstead and the engineer, who was a wonderful engineer, but unfortunately he'd been to a wedding all day and it was very soon incredibly apparent that he was completely and absolutely drunk. He got more and more aggressive. We, then we had a really good bit of luck because he passed out cold and we had to carry him out with one zombie on one arm and the other arm, put him in a black London taxi and I never ever saw him again. Gus Dudgeon was a tape operator and he'd never done a session as a recording engineer and he took over and it was his first session. We got a number one hit around the world from that session. Gus went on to produce, of course, people like David Bowie, Elton John, Kiki D. Now, more than 50 years on, these two old rockers are coming full circle because I'm bringing them back to St Albans Cathedral, where Rod started his singing career as a choir boy. And they're going to perform a specially arranged choral version of the song that began it all, just for the one show. But it's too late to say your story. How would I know? Why should I I always thought it would be a two-year adventure. We're going to go round the world playing the music we love with our pals. What could be better than that? But I never realised it could be a lifetime's career. We did it not to try and be famous at that time. We were knocked out with rock and roll, and we gave our whole selves to it. She's not there. 